What's going on viewers? Welcome back to the channel. So as you can see here, I've got three main components on my desk that I'm upgrading to from my recent build. Now I'm going to go ahead and separate this video into two different parts. Part one is going to be a video in a deep dive on the CPU cooler. It's an air cooler made by a company called Thermalright. And then I'm going to also make a part two video of the motherboard, which is a MSI Pro B660M ADDR4. CPU is the Core i7-12700K. Oh yes, we've got one. And that's being cooled by this very, very nice air cooler right here, which is made by a company called Thermalright. This is the Assassin King 120SE. Judging by the name of 120, it comes with a 120 millimeter cooling fan. As you can see here, this is RGB and this will work with uh, pairing it with my motherboard, syncing all the lights together and everything like that. This does have a very nice five heat pipe design. So it kind of sits right in the middle of the very base ones, which are four heat pipe. And there's a little bit more higher price options that have six heat pipes. So this one should be very, very nice to pair with this processor. It's compatible with a lot of different CPU types. All necessary brackets are gonna be included in the box. Now the fan does have your typical PWM connector as well as the connector for your RGB syncing. Now this does say that it has a highly refined machined base. So that's for the heat pipes and then the metal plate as well. Everything should be pretty smooth. Uh, it supposedly has AG HP heat pipes, whatever that means. And this is quite a compact unit for compatibility with RAM. You shouldn't have any clearance issues for your typical motherboard. Specification wise, the dimensions are 120 millimeters length, 73 millimeters width, and 148 millimeters height. All right, so let's go ahead and unbox the cooler and see what we're dealing with. And by the way, if you're not already, consider hitting that subscribe button, support the little guys like myself. Unlock chill force here. Got some documentation. This is the 120 millimeter RGB fan. We've got all of the installation tools, brackets. We even got some thermal grease right there as well. And here is the heat sink itself. So as you can see there, very tall metallic blades. There is no coating on these blades. Uh, this top one is coated with black ink, as you can see there. As you can see, five heat pipes on each side. Let's go all the way down here. And that is what the surface looks like right there. And it looks pretty machined so far. I'll go ahead and remove this when I'm ready to install this onto the CPU. And let's take a quick look at the included accessories here. So we got a couple back plates here. This is the LGA1700 that I'm going to be using. You get 3M dual adhesive tape there. This is the LGA1150 and 1200. Same kind of deal there. These are the two side brackets. Got the included thermal right thermal grease that I will not be using, but it is included. And then a whole slew of bolts and standoffs depending on what type of CPU you have. Last but not least are the spring clips for the fan to mount to the heatsink. All right, and since I have LGA 1700, I'm gonna go ahead and make a cut here. Save this AM4 for possibly another date. And I also have some older Intel uh, standoffs when needed. So I'm going to go ahead and carefully put this on its back here. And let's go ahead and remove the backing to expose the adhesive strips. These are the four included standoffs that go over the mounting holes. 
All right, so essentially these go just like that. They look like they're supposed to go this way, but they're actually supposed to go in reverse uh, with this standoff facing upward. All right, next step is to screw them down. I'm gonna give this one quick clean. All right, and let's take a close look at how machined these heat spreaders are and the heat plate as well. So there is a close-up view of how well this is machined. It's looking very, very good. I do see a little bit of um, radial smooth marks there, but overall it's very, very nice. Okay, essentially all there is to it is to plop this right on top. I'm going to try to use even pressure and align these screws up properly. Okay, let's go ahead and tighten these down incrementally. Okay, as far as the RGB fan, you get your typical PWM 4-pin, and then you also get a 3-pin for your RGB. As you can see here, it does have a male portion to daisy chain additional fans, which is really nice. So yeah, I have a CPU fan header right here, and then I also have an RGB header right here. So I can use these top two and route them behind the motherboard on top of the case for some very clean cable management. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the cables up here at the top back corner keep them out of the way just like so. Okay, so you wanna make sure that you have your intake and then these spring-loaded clips essentially just go straight through the mounting holes and then the other side clips onto the heatsink side. Alright, and there is the mounted fan. And as you can see here, all of my cables are coming towards the top of the motherboard. You can route them through the chassis, back over onto these two headers here for a nice clean install. But essentially, the CPU cooler is ready to go. Let's go ahead and install our RAM and then install this into our case. Alright, so this portion of the build is done. Let's go ahead and install this into the case and finish up the rest of the steps. By the way, one thing I did want to note is that the CPU power does have two inlets here. As you can see, your typical 4x4, which is 8, and there's an additional 4. And what I'm gathering online is that this extra 4 pin is not needed. Not that you can even overclock on a B660 motherboard, so I'm kind of curious why this is even here. But hopefully I should be able to boot, post, and run it just fine with the standard 8. Otherwise, this is going to delay my project by about a week until I can find a proper power supply that has this extra 4 pin. And you just want to make sure your standoffs are all in the proper orientation. All right, and let's drop in these internals, shall we? Okay, so we've got everything bolted in. Let's go ahead and wire everything up now. So the CPU fan header is up here. RGB header is up here. And yeah, I do have those ports right in there to nicely and neatly tuck these in.
All right, guys, that was an unboxing and install video of the Thermalrite Assassin King 120 SE. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and comment as usual. Consider hitting that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.